G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're going to be having a close look at an absolutely beautiful soft coral reef tank and exactly what it takes to maintain this system. We'll have a close look at the fish and corals in this system in just a sec. But first of all, let's have a look at the tank and the components which are running on it. This is a Red Sea Max 650. It's an all-in-one tank which has had Radeon LEDs retrofitted with this cool light mount. So it has an excellent lighting system. There's a sub filter which we'll look at in a sec. There's uh, very little in the way of uh, water flow. The tank actually comes with four jets across the back and they're providing all of the flow for this tank. There's a chiller uh, and the skimmer is the original skimmer that comes with this system. But let's have a look at the fish and the corals in this tank. So what I find interesting about this tank is that it is entirely a soft coral tank. In fact, there are no stony corals whatsoever. And the different types of soft corals that we've got are interesting because they really do have uh, diversity amongst the shape and color. So the, the first ones that I see are these big finger leathers or sinularias, and they're absolutely massive. We've got this green one here and the purple one on the end, and they really create a presence in the tank. But you'll also notice that we've got the two really big sarcophytons or toadstool leathers. There's other types of soft corals as well. We've got the daisy polyps over here, uh, and we've also got a variety of corellomorphs. Now there's three different colors with corellomorphs and one of the interesting things about corellomorphs is the diversity of color that you can find. In this tank, we've got red, purple, and green. And they really are a very easy coral to keep and they do well in this tank in the lower half, whereas the other corals are up the top right under the radions. Now the corals in this tank are very nice, but what I actually like the most about this tank is the fish mix. And there are some absolutely beautiful fish in this tank. So let's have a quick look at the different fish in this tank. The corals in this system are really nice, but it is the fish that I find particularly attractive about this system. And we have a real beautiful dynamic. And I have to say, for me, the star of the show is the olivaceous tang. This uh, yellow guy with the orange shoulder, also called orange shoulder tangs, He's relatively small, they do get very large, and still in his juvenile coloration of the yellow, but they're a really friendly fish and one of my favorites. There's also a really nice lipstick tang in here, and lipstick tangs can be a little bit prone to not putting on good weight when they're small, but this one is particularly healthy and such a nice fish. We also have a Des Jardines sailfin. There's a blue tang, which is quite large, and there's two yellow tangs. So the mix of tangs in this tank is probably the best thing, but there's also a regal angel. Now, we often don't put uh, angelfish in a lot of the mixed reef tanks that we do. They can be a little bit prone to uh, nipping at corals. But in this tank, there's the regal angel, which is particularly healthy. And there's also a flame angel, which is another one of the, the real beautiful fish in the system. 
there's a group of four clownfish and they kind of spend most of the time uh, hosting to this purple sea larial on the end and they look really good. It's always good to have clownfish in a tank. There's a few other bits and pieces. I think we have, uh, there's at least one uh, Bangai Cardinal, there's a Scormopinus anthias, a Barrier Reef uh, Damsel, and there's a, a Hawkfish as well. It's definitely the mix of fish and the fact that they're in such good condition that for me, makes this tank. So, we're here today to do a service. So we'll start by having a look underneath at the filtration. We'll do a gravel vac and a water change. This system has a refugium which certainly has some very healthy ketomorph growing in it. Uh, this tank does run relatively high with nutrients. The phosphate and nitrate are higher than we would keep most of our mixed reef tanks. And the reason being is that there is a relatively large load of fish in this system and they're very well fed. Now that's one of the reasons why soft corals was the, the natural choice for this tank. But what is interesting is this tank has a dosing pump. It has the Kamoa X4 Pro, but there's only a very small amount of supplements going into the system because there's very little draw of calcium, KH and mag, given that all the corals in the system are soft corals. So we're gonna give the filter a clean. We're gonna clean out some of the uh, filter pads in here as well before we start the water change. Whenever I clean out any biological media or mechanical filtration, I always use water that's come from the tank. So I find it quite easy to siphon water across from the sump into a bucket and use that water to clean all the media. These, uh, these systems come with the Red Sea Sea Skim, which uh, I actually think is a pretty underrated skimmer. It always seems to pull out a fair bit of waste. So that's it for what we're going to do with the filtration. Um, now we'll start with the gravel vac because that's really the most important aspect of the service on this tank today. Over the years, we've actually reduced the amount of sand in this tank. And uh, previously, it was a real detritus trap. Uh, too much sand can be a, a bit of a problem. And the other issue we have had in the past was a lot of the rock work was on the substrate and made the detritus trap problem even worse. But uh, the amount of sand isn't too bad now. But you can see how important it is that we do this gravel back. The water coming out from uh, the gravel backing is 
quite a, a dark brown, caramel sort of color. And that's all bacterial silt, which is otherwise accumulating in the, in the substrate. So the gravel vac is definitely an important part of the maintenance of this system. So now it's time for the water change. We're going to do 50% water change on this tank and whenever you're doing a large water change it's, imp it's important that you try and do it as quickly as possible so the corals aren't out of the water for any longer than they need to be. So whilst the water is draining out I'm just getting the pump ready, I've got it plugged into a power point inside uh, under the tank and uh, I'll be able to very quickly when we finish draining to put the hoses onto the pump onto our IBC on the back of the Colorado and hit the on switch and start filling the tank. So the whole time uh, from draining to having the tank fill back up again should be no longer than 10 minutes. The important thing when you're filling up the tank after water change is to fill it up to the same level that the sump was previously. So we've done that and now we just have to pack up our gear and then come back and check out the tank. So that's everything that we're going to do for our service on this beautiful soft coral tank. Soft coral tanks are one of the most underrated ways you can run a, a marine tank because they do allow for a great balance between the fish and the corals. This tank has quite a high by load of fish. They're all well fed and very healthy. And for that reason, the nutrients are a little bit higher than we would run an SBS or mixed reef tank. But the balance between the fish and the corals is excellent and it really makes for a beautiful tank. So that's our episode of Gallery Aquatic TV for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. That's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you've subscribed to our channel so you don't miss an episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!